Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Hey, wildlings. History mystery time. In 1959, nine hikers from the Ural Polytechnic Institute died under mysterious circumstances on the slopes of the ominously named Kolat Siakl. The incident was named for the expedition leader Igor Dyatlov. To this day, it remains one of the most upsetting mysteries of the 20th century. Tonight's tale, My Grandfather Knew What Happened in the Dyatlov Pass Incident, Part 1 by the sloshed swashbuckler himself, Drunken Swordsman. God help us, they're still out there. Those were the last words in my grandfather's diary, which was found open on the table at which he shot himself in 2019. I was the one who found his body, a hole blasted through his head with his old army issue pistol. I can still see the scene to this day, blood dripping down the sides of his desk, the metallic scent on the air. I don't think it'll ever leave me. But that's not why I'm writing this. After I grieved, that sentence began filling me with a morbid curiosity. They're still out there. Who, what was out there? My grandfather had always been a quiet man. He kept to himself and spoke little about his past. He had served in the army of the USSR in his youth, and I always assumed that he kept silent about it out of guilt in being part of one of the cruelest regimes in the history of the world. After translating and reading his diary, I know better. That's what I'm here to tell you about. I know what he was keeping quiet about and why he took his life in 2019. It's all in the diary that he kept during his time in the army. The first few months he writes about are mundane, mostly detailing his training and first deployment. What is clear from these parts of the diary is that he was a patriotic man who had no trouble following orders, a soldier who kept his mouth shut and his head down, and that's probably what got him where he ended up. Six months after his training, he was transferred to a base in the Ural Mountains that he had never heard of. And that's where things start to get strange. This is his story. September 2nd, 1958. This place is like no base that I've ever been stationed at. It's cut into the side of the mountains themselves, almost wholly concealed and practically undetectable from the outside. We are not allowed any communication with the rest of the world. The base is built in five descending levels going down to the roots of the mountain. Each level is accessed by a single tunnel, with airlocks and security stations connecting them. Without authorization, you cannot leave the level that you are currently on. Our commander is a hard man named Sergei Yahontov. He talks little and is ruthless in disciplining his soldiers. I have only ever seen him once upon my arrival here. He gave us our standing orders, which must be obeyed at all times. These orders are what give me pause about this whole situation. They seem ludicrous, but several men have already been punished for not keeping them in mind. If any staff member acts disoriented or follows you to a secluded part of the base, sound the alarm immediately. You are authorized to use lethal force if they do not desist. If you find yourself in a place you do not remember entering, sound the alarm immediately and lie face down on the floor with your hands on your head. But the strangest order is the last. If you are stationed at level 5 and the screaming stops, sound the alarm immediately. You are authorized to use lethal force until relieved. I don't know what to think of any of this. I wish to serve my country, but these orders fill me with a strange dread that I've never felt before. September 5th, 1958. Today I befriended another soldier stationed here. His name is Yuri Ivanovich, a private like me. He seems talkative and friendly, an unusual trait among soldiers stationed here, and he was eager to talk once I told him that I was new at the base. 
We were discussing the strangeness of the place and the secrecy surrounding it when I summoned the courage to ask him about what our purpose was here. Yuri, I began carefully, do you know anything about what this place is supposed to be? What is level 5? And what is that screaming that the orders mention? Yuri's smile faded. He leaned in closer to me. It is best you don't ask about level 5, Mikhail. He said under his breath, nothing good ever comes from talking about that place. Keep your head down and you might be lucky enough never to go down there. My skin crawled. Yuri was usually a quite amiable man, but now he was deadly serious. What is level 5 though? Have you ever been down there? I haven't, no. Thank God. But I know someone who has. And what happened to him, I asked, realizing that I too was instinctively whispering. He came back, but he was never the same, Yuri answered sadly. He's been changed ever since. Even the fact that he came back is not common. Many soldiers sent to level 5 never return. Did he ever tell you about what he saw down there? Only one thing. Five years, he told me. They have been screaming in those caves for five years. He would tell me no more and left me at my post with more questions than answers. September 11th, 1958. Yesterday, we were sent on patrol in the area surrounding the base. The surrounding mountains are an icy wasteland and I was freezing within 10 minutes of setting foot outside. Yuri was in our unit. Uh, he had regained his usual happy demeanor since our conversation and seemed almost untroubled by the biting cold. Our orders were simple. If we met anyone, we were to make sure that they came nowhere near the mountain. We were to remain hidden if possible, but if we found any hikers going in the direction of our base, we were authorized to use any necessary measures to dissuade them. I hoped it wouldn't come to that. We only came across a single group of travelers and thankfully they were going in a direction which would take them away from our base. We departed shortly after making sure that they were in no way a threat. Whatever it is that we're guarding here, it is so dangerous that even the lives of Soviet citizens are a worthy price to pay for keeping it secret. September 14th, 1958. Today, Yuri introduced me to the soldier who had been to level 5. It was a complete accident that all three of us were stationed at the same guard post. Yuri, always talkative, took no time in starting a conversation to make the hours go by faster. The soldier's name is Ifan. He is a thin man with nervous eyes that flick from side to side constantly. He talks in an anxious whisper. Yuri wasn't lying. Whatever Ifan saw at level 5, it, it has changed him forever. He wouldn't let me talk with Ifan about his time there, but I didn't even want to once I saw the man's state of mind. It would be cruel to remind him of something so obviously traumatizing. But even so, I left the meeting more anxious about this place than I had been before. Ifan wouldn't stop whispering to himself. It was quiet under his breath, but I made out one sentence clearly enough. Five years. Five years. It's been inside them, in the dark, for five years. The next few months go by with not much interesting happening. My grandfather spends most of his time either out on patrol in the surrounding areas or on guard duty in various parts of the base. He's never sent down to level 5 and he doesn't inquire more about that area. The next interesting entry is in mid-December. December 15th, 1958. I will never forget this day. We were on guard duty, checking the staff going from level 4 to level 3. It had been a long shift, the 5 hours so far with 3 more to go. It was nearing midnight when things started going to shit. It was a quiet moment and the corridor was empty except for me and Yuri when the man appeared. 
He was a researcher, not a soldier, balding with a pair of spectacles and a round red face. He was strangely hunched over, dragging his feet and looking at the floor. I figured that he was simply tired after a long shift. Papers, please, comrade, I asked him as he came up to the post. He looked up at me and I started back. His eyes were red and bloodshot, darting from side to side, just like a fonts. He mumbled something under his breath, and he made to walk past me. I stepped out into his path. He hadn't given me any identification, and I couldn't let him pass without it. Kograd, I need to see your authorization before you can leave level four. The man was looking at the ground again. Now he was closer to me, I could see him shivering. He was mumbling something under his breath. I leaned in closer to hear him. They can't get out. They can't get out. We've left them there for five years. Five years. I backed away slightly, raising my forearm. Yuri could see something was wrong and aimed his gun at the man's head. Comrade, he said loud and slow, please give us your authorization. The man looked at him, wide-eyed. Have you been to level five, soldier? He asked in a hoarse whisper. Have you heard the trapped men scream? I need you to lie down, right now, I said, panic rising in me. No amount of training could prepare me for one of our own behaving like this. Yuri circled around, moving behind the man. The researcher didn't seem to notice. His attention was totally fixed on me. He stumbled forwards, and I aimed my gun in nerveless fingers. They can never get out, he said, his voice trembling. If any men are trapped in level five, we will get them out, I said, trying to sound soothing and calm even though my heart was hammering in my chest. The, the men? The researcher mumbled, then he laughed. <laughs> no, no, the men are trapped, but it is not them that can never be freed. They are not alone in those caves. He looked me dead in the eyes. It's the things in them. That can never escape. And he lunged forward, making to run past me. And the gunshot rang out in the corridor. The researcher crumbled to the floor, blood leaking from his chest. And I saw Commander Sergei Yohantov stood behind Yuri, a smoking pistol in his hand. His face was twisted in barely contained fury. I snapped to attention and Yuri quickly followed suit. What is your first standing order, Private? He asked, walking face to face with us and looking at me. To sound the alarm if any staff member appears disoriented or follows us, sir. We are allowed to use lethal force if they do not comply with our commands, sir. And this man did not comply, Private? He did not, sir. Then why did you not sound the alarm? Why was this man still alive when I found you? You forget your orders, and that cannot be tolerated in this base. There is a punishment for disobedience, Private. He smiled cruelly. You will both report to level five tomorrow at noon. My blood ran cold. Yuri stepped up to the commander. Permission to speak, sir. Granted. The blame is mine, sir. I told Private Mikhail Sidorov to hold fire. I have overstepped my rank and disobeyed standing orders. I opened my mouth in shock. Yuri was lying, but he was protecting my skin at his own risk. He shot me a quick glance and shook his head almost imperceptibly. So I shut my mouth. The situation was your fault, then? Sergei asked him slowly. Y yes, sir. Then you will report to level five tomorrow alone. Now continue in your task. A cleanup team will arrive shortly to dispose of the body. With that, he walked off. I turned to Yuri once Sergei was out of earshot. Are you mad? I'm to blame too. You can't take the fall for this. You know what level five did to Ifan and to that researcher. You can't possibly keep calm, Michel. 
Yuri cut me off. I could tell that he was trying to remain casual and managing so with great difficulty. There's no reason for two of us to go down there if we can avoid it. I will be fine. Don't worry. It can't be as bad as everyone would have you believe. Then he smiled wryly. Besides, this way I can tell you about what's down there when I get back. The rest of our shift was carried out in silence. Yuri then departed to his bunk to catch some sleep before he had to report to level 5. But I cannot sleep. I can't stop thinking about what could be waiting for us down there. And what my friend might come back like if he indeed comes back at all. December 16th, 1958. Yuri has not returned from level 5. It's almost midnight and I still haven't seen any sign of him. December 17th, 1958. There is still no sign of Yuri. I can't sleep. I, I stay awake for hours wondering if he's alright. December 19th, 1958. Yuri still hasn't come back. What is happening down there? December 20th, 1958. Today, I could not take it anymore. When my guard duty ended this morning, I managed to catch Commander Yahontov while he was on his way to the officer's quarters. Permission to speak, sir? My voice was hoarse with trepidation of this conversation. He looked at me, a sort of apathetic curiosity coming over his face. He glanced down at my name tag. Granted, Private Sidorov. Sir, five days ago my friend Private Yuri Ivanovich was sent to level 5. He hasn't come back since then and I'm worrying about him. Sergei looked in my eyes, his face unreadable. And what do you wish from me, Private? I would like to know whether Yuri is alive, sir, whether he is all right, I said. My mouth was dry and my throat clenched as Sergei looked at me, an all too familiar anger building behind his eyes. You are aware that discussing our work here is not recommended, aren't you, Private? I had gone too far now to back out. I could only press on. Yes, sir, I am. Then listen to me well, Mikhail Sodorov. Whether your friend is or isn't alive is no concern to me or to our task here. Our only job is to keep level 5 secure. That is what we are here to do and I will gladly send every man in this base to their death if it means that task is carried out. Sergei's voice was getting louder and louder until he was shouting at the top of his lungs, spittle flying into my face completely unknowingly I had touched on a subject which I should have never opened with him. Sir, I I began trying to apologize, but the commander wouldn't have it. What's down there can never come to the light of day, do you understand? If your friend shot himself after what he heard there, that is a fair price to pay. Never forget that. With that, he turned and stormed off. I may have made a huge mistake today. December 21st, 1958. If I never write again in this diary, know that I have either killed myself or I am too changed to ever write my memories down again. This morning, we were receiving our orders for the day as usual guard duty, maintenance or patrol, that's all I've ever done here. Not today though. The officer read down the list, reciting the names and duties for the first part of the day. I was always at the end of the list and only started paying attention towards the end of his monologue. Targanev. Guard duty, level 4, 0800. Kushnetsov. Guard duty, level 4. 0800. Chermyshevsky, patrol, 1000. He suddenly stopped right before my name. His eyes tightened as he squinted down on his list as if surprised by what he read there. 
Then he spoke in a strangled voice. Sidorov. Report to level 5. My military friends tell me that sometimes the mantra of hurry up and wait becomes oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. For some, this is because of the horror of combat. For others, it's worse. Stay scary, wildlings. If you have a job that has standing orders, for goodness sake, stick to them and make the most of your nights.